So actually what I want to talk about now is um, kind of will lead into the first and the second fundamental theorems of calculus later. This is just going to be kind of an intro to it. Um, this right here is is what makes well what makes Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz um, this is what made their discoveries so valuable. Um, Everything we've done so far has been pretty separate from each other as far as the first big problem, which is the derivative, and the second big problem. Okay? They, they did not relate to each other in any way. Uh, what I want to show you right now is that they are going to be related. Um, I'm going to convince you that they're related, or at least I'm going to try to, uh, showing units in a coordinate plane. But we're not actually going to be able to show the relationship yet. Uh, it's going to take a little bit more knowledge about both of those things before we can make that connection. Uh, but, but we're going to see here that they are very closely related, even though the approach that we take for each one of them is very different. If you remember when we did the tangent line problem, um, this is big problem number one, um, our goal was to find the slope of a tangent line to a curve. So when we did that, um, since the tangent line only touches the curve at one point, at least in that neighborhood, uh, we had a little bit of trouble with the slope because the slope formula requires two points. And so we used a limit where the two points are getting infinitesimally close to each other. So, so the, the numbers are getting really close to each other. Um, and we were able to do that to find the, the slope of the tangent line to the curve. Um, so if the tangent line were to look like, say, this... Um, we could find the slope knowing that, um, well, knowing the point where it's tangent, the point of tangency, and then also choosing another point on the function and allowing that point to approach the, the point of tangency. Um, when we did that, we also looked at units, and we said that the slope of a line has units as long as the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate have units. Uh, for this particular example, I'm going to use meters on the y-axis and seconds on the x-axis. So this, this function right here would be a function that's graphing the position of something uh, with respect to time. Um, and what would the units of the slope be in this case? It would be meters per second, right? So the derivative, which gives us slope, the derivative of this function is going to have units that are meters per second. Okay, um, So the reason is we have a change in y on top, which is going to be a change in position, or meters, um, and divided by a change in time on the bottom, which is going to be a change in seconds. Uh, so when we take a derivative, we get meters per second. Now, if we look at a graph from the perspective of the area problem, and we graph a derivative let's say in meters per second, um, with respect to time in seconds. Now what we're doing is we're finding an area, and the units on this area are going to be what? Just meters. And the reason is the units here, the units along the x-axis are going to be seconds, the units along the y-axis axis are going to be meters per second, when we find the area, we're going to be multiplying the units together because we're finding the area of rectangles, um, so just the length times width of each one of those. And so the units on the integral are going to be meters. Now, what just happened there? When we did the tangent line problem, what happened? We divide the units along the y-axis by the units along the x-axis, and we end up with a rate. In this case, um, this interpretation would be a speed or, or a velocity. Um, and so we're, we're dividing units with the tangent line problem. With the area problem, we multiply units. Okay. Now, if, if we take a derivative and then we take the integral, what units do we end up with? The units that we started with. Okay. Now, I... I th I think that's enough to at least see that there is a relationship there. If we take a derivative and then we take an integral, our units end up being back where we started. Now, I will say that 
When we take a derivative, we're finding the slope at a particular point. When we're finding an area, we're finding the, the area over an interval. Um, so there are some things that we're going to have to work out there, but there's a very close relationship between the integral and the derivative. And, and that relationship, again, was, was the key discovery in the 1600s that made calculus easily accessible to mathematicians and, and made it easy to use calculus um, to do a wide variety of problems um, and, and removed a lot of the limitations, especially a lot of the limitations with the area problem. If you remember, right now with what we know how to do, we can find the area of this as long as, a, as it's a polynomial with degree 3 or less, right? Well, this relationship is going, going to allow us to find the areas of a big variety of, of functions. Um, but we're going to have to get there later. That's, well, 